Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunk of Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. Today, we're going to be dissecting um, Rasheed Wallace's comments on whether or not LeBron James would have been a beast or soft within his entire NBA era. But before we hop into all that, you know we got to give a quick shout out to a subscriber today, as always. And today is going to be Trevor Airy. Thank you, bro, so much for like, commenting, subscribing, turn on post notification, and showing so much love and support towards our YouTube channel and our podcast overall. We greatly appreciate it. Now, Greg, obviously, you know, you saw Rasheed Wallace's comments on a million dollars worth of game podcast. This, this yeah. actually was... It's funny because this occurred nine, ten months ago, and you know, obviously, it resurfaced just because you know the million dollars worth of game podcast. They actually reposted it on their Facebook page, you know, just uh, a week ago. And obviously, you know, Rasheed Wallace, he he has G14 classification to you know state his opinion and everything. This is a guy that was a four-time NBA All Star, you know, won a championship in 2004 with the Detroit Pistons, and had a pretty solid career as an NBA player. And you know, I respect his opinion, even though I disagree with it from this perspective. But I mean, I, I just want to hear your thoughts on his comments and everything. Yeah, I feel like it was a backhanded comment. I mean, everybody knows LeBron is 6'9", 260. And, the, and back in that era, I mean, it was a more physical. De- the defense was really good. I mean, but in that era, LeBron had four all-stars up to that up to that point, to 2008. So, I mean, he showed that he was a proven guy in the league, came in out of high school. We all, we all know. But LeBron is a guy who's never ad- averaged less than 20 points. And then when he went up against Rasheed in the 2007 Eastern Conference Finals, he showed up. He averaged 25, 9, and 9 and 8, um, shooting. Shooting 44%, 35% from the three point line. And there was two games that he just went off on Rasheed and also dunked on him as well. So I think <laughs> LeBron, I think LeBron can really he can adjust to any air. He adjusted to both eras. And in and, and that physical era, I mean he uses his size and his frame to really get to the basket. But then switching over to this era with the guys like Steph Curry, Ke- Ke- Kevin Durant, um, James Harden really had to be more of a, you know, using his post game, uh, expanding his post game and shoot more threes and more perimeter centric. But I think LeBron can definitely, he's, he was definitely a beast in that era. I don't, I'm not sure what Rasheed was really getting at, but I, I, I see where he's coming from, but it's definitely a false comment. I think LeBron can really go, can go back and forth through Eastern areas and is doing very, very well, especially at his age right now. Yeah, I, I think LeBron James, actually, I know LeBron James would have been a beast in that era because yeah, he was too. a beast in that era. I mean, this yeah. is a guy that was considered a top five player within that era. You know, he played six seasons there, um, you know, averaged 27.5 points per game, seven rebounds per game, north of six assists per game, you know, almost nearly two steals a game, all 47% from the field um, from that dynamic. And, you know, who's also a five-time All-Star, five-time All-NBA member, three-time first-team All-NBA member, rookie of the year, scoring champion, made a defensive first team and won two all-star MVPs so I don't really know what why this question was even asked I mean yeah when you look at you know Rasheed Wallace's resume I mean I stated it off earlier in the episode four all-stars an NBA championship that's really all he had to hang on his head over you know what I'm saying and but you know what what I don't like about you know this question is the fact that you know Guys can't either be beast or soft. There is an in between. And then, you know, when when you're discussing, you know, whether a player is soft or not, that more so has to do with, you know, um, their physical stature and, you know, their mentality and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like a guy like Draymond Green, I don't consider him soft by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't think he would have dominated, you know, the late 90s or the early 2000s with his yeah. offensive game, Greg. So, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, totally I don't agree. like... I don't like how the question was worded, but I mean, there, there's a number of reasons as to why I feel like LeBron James would have dominated that era, so to speak. You know, just given the fact that he's playing in an era that actually asked him to do a lot more from an offensive perspective. Now, I know the 2000s, that was the greatest defensive era in NBA history. There are a, a lot of, you know, rule changes uh, on the defensive side of the basketball. That was when the zone was implemented and all that. But if you look at, you know, the the level of competition that LeBron James has to go up against on a night in night out basis in today's game, as compared to, you know, back then, I mean, you had guys like Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett, you know, Dirk Nowitzki. Those are the best players within that era as compared to, you know, guys like um, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, even James Harden, who are more than likely going to be listed on, you know, top 50 list above those guys outside of maybe Kobe Bryant. But I mean, 
this LeBron James easily is a guy that fits within any era. I mean, his offensive game would have would have excelled in the late nineties, early nineties, eighties, seventies, sixties, you name it. I mean, yeah, this he is could guy put that, you in the post, in the paint. I mean, anywhere on the court, his IQ is he can he could be the facilitator. He could be anything for you. I think I think it's. I mean, he's a well rounded guy. He could literally fit anywhere. I don't, I just don't understand this comment, especially when Rasheed got dunked on by him. LeBron obliterated them in the playoffs. So I just don't understand uh, what he was talking about. Yeah, and and you know, Rasheed Wallace, he he even stated that he was being a little bit biased towards this entire situation you know Rashid he's one of those guys that favors you know big man and everything and obviously LeBron he's not a big man by any stretch of the imagination but you know when it comes to an offensive perspective this is somebody that you know can play an altitude of positions but you know I think I think when it comes to, you know just guys like LeBron James and he even shitted on Michael Jordan to a certain degree um stating how like Michael Jordan um you know he he was a phenomenal player but you know getting six rings doesn't really you know move the needle too much for him um if you're Rasheed Wallace obviously but I mean I don't know this is this entire subject it was just really weird it was crazy to me how you know Rasheed Wallace kind of didn't want to say that he would have been a beast in his era even though LeBron James technically was a beast was? in his era yeah. given the fact that you know he he had all those accomplishments outside of an NBA championship and everything but I mean, there's other guys he, like you talked about at the beginning, other guys like Steph Curry and James Harden. I think Steph Curry, I think it would have been guard, hard, hard for them to guard Steph Curry. I mean, Steph Curry is a guy who can stretch, has a great range, can move great off ball, can has great handles and get to the paint. I just, I think he would have struggled physicality wise, but them trying to chase him around, I think it would have been tough for them in, back in that in the 90s to guard Steph Curry. Yeah you're, talk, yeah, you're talking about a guy that can pull up from, you know, 30, 40 feet, you know, yeah. is, is, is easily considered the greatest shooter of all all time whether on ball or off ball ball yeah and then you know from from a smaller offensive player's perspective most of the time they're going to be favored when it comes you know penetrating into the lane and initiating contact because the uh, uh referees typically you know they favor the smaller offensive player from that dan dynamic just because the bigger defensive players typically their their physical stature it, it's really imposing and you know it can make it seem like whenever they're roughing those smaller guys up it actually looks like they're being fouled so Steph Curry he would have been able to dominate easily within that era given the fact that he these are all these guys that you were, were bringing up whether it's James Harden LeBron James Steph Curry they were all actually drafted into this era and most yeah. of them got off to pretty hot starts Steph Curry averaged nearly 18 points per game in his rookie season you know so I mean this notion that you know LeBron James uh, would have been able to hold his own. It's just laughable. You're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it is laughable. And, and, and for my final point, I just want to say, like, I don't like when old heads say these type of comments or at, or get these type of questions because it seems like they're like shitting on these guys because these guys are very skillful. I mean, we're seeing a different brand of basketball in this new era, so it's it's okay to have differences and different eras and stuff like that. I just think they need to appreciate these guys, and we don't always have to compare everything when it comes to you know these topics. Yeah, I, I agree with that 100. percent But and ultimately, like I said, we we respect Rasheed Wallace's you know opinions and everything because he he listed off his top five players in uh, all time, but you know it, it didn't include Michael Jordan or LeBron James. So it does you can obviously get the sense of uh, you know Rasheed Wallace being a little bit biased in this entire interview and everything. But I mean that's neither here nor there. But you guys let us know what you think about this entire subject in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for tuning into another episode with me and Greg on the Ball Fake Podcast. We greatly appreciate the love and support that we continue to get on a day-by-day -day basis. If you're new to our YouTube channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, turn on post notifications. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But besides that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King, and we out. We out.